Well, hello friends. So today I'm going to look at a five and a quarter inch drive bay adapter for slim optical drives. And it's made by Siba. And I got this from Amazon the other day. And what does this exactly do? Well, this drive bay will let me use some of the items that I found on my recent scrapping, uh, namely some SATA optical drives. And what attracted me to this specific adapter was the fact that it also can handle SSDs hot swap SSDs, and it has three, uh, two USB 3 ports. And I thought, well, this would be a cool addition to my desktop computer, which currently doesn't have an optical drive, but I've been using a portable USB 2 DVD CD rewrite drive, and I sort of get tired of plugging and unplugging, and I'm kind of an old school guy, wherein I like to have a yeah, a rewritable DVD CD-ROM drive in my computer. Why not? I'm always burning discs. And when I mean always burning discs, I'm burning a lot of discs for various projects, retro builds, driver discs. It's like every time I build something new, it needs another disc with the specific drivers for that video card, for that motherboard, for that operating system. And this also explains why I bought this StarTech adapter for the mini SATA to regular SATA. And of course, as I had said in a previous video, Amazon was kind enough to send me an entire pack of 10 of these things instead of just one. Uh, so I have, I have extra to spare. And the idea with this adapter is that the optical drive will literally just fit right inside this bay. It'll slide in, and then there's two little mini screws. It does come with screws. It comes with little mini screws right here for the actual optical drive, and then it comes with four regular screws for attaching the, the, um, the bay adapter into your computer chassis. Additionally, again, we have the USB 3, or you could use it with USB 2, plug for the motherboard. And it comes with one SATA data cable. And it comes with one power adapter. So it has a Molex to SATA adapter, which would actually go here on the drive. And why do they include this? Well, from what I can tell, they include this because the actual box itself for the USB 3 and possibly for some LEDs requires additional power. So it has a little power adapter that's wired into the Molex and that plugs in right here and that would help provide additional power for for the device, uh, probably for the USB 3. So these might actually be additionally powered USB 3 ports. And there we go. It's kind of a neat little device. I'm going to go ahead and put my optical drive in here, and then we'll go ahead and switch over to installing this bad boy into my Antec case. And I've done a previous video on my Antec case as a short and as a longer build. Um, it's an old school case. It's got a lot of five and a quarter inch drive bays. And again, I just missed having an optical drive in it. So without further ado, I will get this installed in here and then we'll get it uh, installed in the actual computer case.
and there we have it. So we now have our optical drive in the adapter. And then again, we can put, if we like an SSD in there, and then we should have the working USB 3 ports. This optical drive is a little bit different. It came out of a laptop where it had a, uh, it had sort of a bottom that was shaped. It had sort of a bezel on it and it sticks out a little bit, but I still think it looks great. I think it'll be, if it works, God willing, this will be a nice addition to my desktop. And again, the mini to normal sized SATA was necessary because of the way the laptops work. So that all connects just like that. And then we have the regular power and data cable from the motherboard and the power supply in the computer will plug into here. And then we'll have the Molex will power the USB and the SATA, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the SATA SSD. So we'll get the chassis up here and we'll try and get this installed and see if everything works. As we can see, we've got our older Antec case here and it is a bit of a classic. And cable management with this old Antec True Power Trio, it is a 650 watt, which is more than enough for my Ryzen 5. Uh, 2400G, I'm just using the APU graphics. Um, it works just fine on this system. Uh, it's more than enough and right now everything's just going to slide in. I'm going to use the lower front drive bay. Get that slid in. Get it lined up nicely. And everything seems to be looking pretty good so far. I like the way that that looks. And, yeah, yeah, it's a handsome addition to the system. So what we'll do is, now that we know it's going to fit okay, I'll get the drive rails, because this is an old case, I have to use drive rails. And I always make sure that I know where my spare parts are. I have my spare drive rails actually in the case currently. And I can just pull those out, use the included screws, get the drive rails on, and then get everything connected and fired up. And we'll see how it goes. So now with the drive rails attached to the bay, everything should just slide neatly in, lock into place. Just like the old days. That's secure. Doesn't look too bad. Get the uh, power connected and the data cable connected. And I think that's a pretty nice looking addition to the front of this classic case. So again, I went ahead and used the included data cable and then I had an extra data cable in the chassis already. We're going to use an additional Molex power connector and then we'll dig up an SATA actual power adapter for, for this and we should be good to go. So here's how everything looks. Fits the case nicely. How's everything working? Well, we'll go ahead and start off by throwing in just a quick, um, I burned a CD of 3D Mark benches. I'll throw that in there. And the system's reading. And we'll go ahead and see how this looks.
spinning up. And there it is. That all works nicely. It's not as fast as a desktop DVD CD-ROM drive, but it does work. Doesn't seem to be complaining. And when I do my scrapyard checks, I can always just replace it with another unit out of another laptop if I need to. So that looks like it's working just fine. Yep. Let's try the SSD. So we'll open the door here. And we'll put in our SSD. Like such. We'll let it close. And it's reading it. And we'll see what pops up on the screen. See if this works. A little hot swap here. And there we go. I had an old install of Windows 10 on this. And there we go. It opened up its partition twice and it opened up into the partitions. So that's, that's just terrific. So that works great also. And it's a 120 gig uh, capacity, you know, 111 SSD. That all works great. One last test. Let's throw in the USB drive. Let's see if this USB works. We'll plug it right into there. And we'll see how well that's working. And there we go. And this was a Windows 10 install boot USB drive. Look at that. Working perfectly. Well, I have to say, for the, um, for the 30 bucks I paid for this roughly on Amazon, I'm actually quite taken with it. Uh, it's going to help me burn my data disks a little easier than swapping around that portable DVD drive on the USB 2. It should be a little bit faster burning them, a little more stable. And, of course, I've got the accessible front ports now on this old case. Uh, I didn't have any before on it. And... Of course, just to show, we can hot swap in the hot swappable drive bay for SSDs, and I like to say for laptop drives also. And there we go. I appreciate everyone watching. If you like what I did today, found this of interest, uh, please subscribe, hit the like button, and um, join me for future videos.